Okay, I'll get one. Uh, I'm I'm in agreement with you on the issue, so I don't I don't need a pamphlet. I do. Well, I'll put it on my. You, you, you might. I'm gonna I mean, put it on my refrigerator. I'm I'm good, but thank you very well, much. You know, children are being mass murdered. I do. Throughout the week in Milwaukee. I do. Around Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm. It saddens me a great deal. Are you taking action to rescue them from death? I am with my vote. Yes, I am. Certainly, as a pastor too, it's something that I, okay. I talk and counsel people trying to, trying to increase their value for life. So, for sure, I'm I'm taking the action I believe I should be taking. So, but don't you think there's more we can do than just vote and help those in need? I mean. Shouldn't we go out to where they're actually murdering children and, and help them? Well, I, rescue them? I think I think being a presence in the community, so that when when women feel like they are going to make that choice, that they have other people they can turn to, and, uh, for sure. But uh, yeah, I do that too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, because we need more Christians to go out and to, into the, the streets, go out into the to, to the public arena, and educate the educate the public on on the humanity of the pre-born and show them what abortions do to children, this culture does to children, and go to the, to the legislatures and demand of them that they do their duty before God and abolish abortion, and go out to the places where they actually murder the children and interpose. And most Christians aren't doing any of that. Well, I, I can certainly tell you that in, in the way that I believe is, is probably most... Um, most relational to my community. I'm trying to do everything I can. I can say that a van filled with pictures like that, though, I mean, I've looked at, I've studied abortion pretty in depth, and so I am aware of what happens. I think it, it can also provide a confusing testimony to people. Like if my girls are teenagers now, so they'll walk past your van when they come in, and they've seen that stuff. But we'll have kids this size coming into church today that see that, and that, um, I think that probably has an emotional impact on a child that's not all positive too and so I'm around kids like that who hold those images around those images all the time and they're, they're just fine yeah well they're just fine now um, I'm around people who grew up with images and, and they're, they're fine now as an adult well I as someone that did I, grow up around those images as a kid I'm I would he's fine. Ah, he's so not, I'm not I'm not fine he's not he's not in a straight <laughs> he's not in a straight jacket I appreciate your comment. No. he's not in a same asylum Oh, no. okay. I just wanted that being actual bad. I'm yeah. walk away. Dude, I'm careful. Because I would end his life right now. We, we should be more concerned about what's happening to children than the emotional impact on people or if it's hurting mothers who murder their babies. And most people show more compassion to the murderers than the victims that they actually murder. Well, I, I would say that I do appreciate your heart for the unborn, and I share that with you. Um, the, the way in which we... The way in which maybe we get that message out and we talk with people. Um, I, I've counseled so many people that have been <laughs> in that situation um, and I can tell you that that I believe there is a point at which our testimony becomes so radical and in your face that the message is lost on people and I think that's maybe where you and I differ a little bit. Um, but again, I don't disagree with you on the, the importance of of life at conception. I don't disagree with you at any of that and on a on a personal pastoral level that's that's the direction I counsel every person that would come towards me mm -hmm. or everyone that I'd have the opportunity to talk to about that issue. So Do you know if anyone here ever goes out to the places the mur the abortion mills where they murder children? We have a children? few. Okay, yep. that's good. We do have a few. And um, I, I encourage you to go out there yourself to to, to make time and to invite others in the congregation to join you and to go out and to educate people on this in the public and I think I think where I struggle with it is is something like this right here and mm -hmm. it's one thing to to carry a message of hope to people it's another it's another thing to use um, kind of to use fear to to motivate people and um, that's my concern maybe with what you're doing is that you, there's nothing wrong in the message you've got. I read the verses on your van. Mm -hmm. um, I see your heart for the unborn, and I agree with you. Um, but what I don't agree with is the tactic of using using that um, those detailed images and words to, in, in essence, scare people into to perhaps um, 
maybe it works on a few people scaring them into a place where they change their mind but I think in most in most cases spiritually speaking um, God's not a God of fear he does not motivate people with fear um, he does not motivate people with violence God does judge and he has the ability to judge with violence but again his heart is not to ever scare people into a place of repentance. Um, it's, his, it's his kindness, Scripture says in the New Testament, that leads people to repentance. And so, um, again. Well, you know what Hebrews says? It says, Hebrews says it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That, that thing, terrifying, that's fearful. But yeah. We should be fearful. And Judges 19. And we should, but, but... Think of also Judges 19. The Levite, after his concubine, was brutally murdered in the middle of the night, raped to death. He took her body, cut her body into 12 yeah, pieces. Sent it to the nations. So that was very graphic. That was more graphic than this because that was the actual body. Yep. So what, what was he wrong to do that? Um, what I would say is that those are... We should be people who live in a healthy fear of God, but God's driving characteristic traits are not fear or judgment. God's driving traits are redemption and hope and love and goodness and rescue from our sin and I think when we take a stand like you're taking right now what we're doing is is trying to highlight the sin to scare the sinner we should because um, if they're in sin they should they need to they need that sin highlighted so they can repent. I think I think right. I think any young woman that walks off the street into an abortion clinic should be forced to see and look and consider what you're showing there they do but, in Milwaukee they yeah. do and they're still going murder babies. But, they harden their hearts. But I'm just saying, I, those images do not motivate people to run from abortion in a healthy manner. I, well, it does if it turns them away from murder. If it, if it scares them out of murdering their child. If it does. That's how, that is healthy. And I can tell you as a pastor, and I was raised in a very um, works-based church where we yeah. did some of this stuff that you're talking about. And I've stood in my protest lines and mm -hmm. I've knocked on doors. Um, and I'm just telling you personally, after 48 years, that my response... That's how old you are. What's that? Yeah, I'm 48. <laughs> my response to caring for people dealing with abortion is a whole lot different than yours. And at the end, God will use it all how he uses it. Um, but I'm just sharing with you my, con my concerns about portraying that graphic nature. Mm -hmm. Well, but we should be more concerned that we're actually doing this to children than that people or children are going to see it. And I, m most, most people, they, they're more concerned about children or other people seeing these images than that we're actually doing this to children. And that's a very misplaced focus. Yeah, well, that's, I, I wouldn't say my focus is I'm more concerned about... I'm more concerned... Oh, we chatted, Nicholas. Okay. We <laughs> chatted. So, oh, yeah, I recall. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm more concerned... Uh, I'm still more concerned about the murdered child than I am about anyone in the public that's offended by abortion. It's not, what, I, it's not what I'm hearing from you, though. No, what you're hearing from me is that I think your tactics are fear-based. And I think God is a God of, of grace and kindness. And He's and also I, a God of judgment, wrath. Yeah, but, but we're not judged. There's one thing we, are for, we are commanded to judge righteously. Uh, yeah, and you gotta you got to take that one. You do have to take that one pretty carefully, though. Uh, there's a point at which we begin to act like God. Um, not in judging. Not when we're commanded to judge. Yeah. It's, yeah, in it, judging. No, um, I mean, it's not wrong to judge, as long as you judge righteously. I mean, yes. Matthew 7 says... Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, to you, this is righteous. Yeah, um, I know. That's why I do it. To me, and this is me, in my conscience, okay. it's fear-based. Um, and that's okay. You can, you can, you have the, yeah, fear the Lord your God with all your heart. I, I know that. Uh, no, if, but, if someone, but God is not a God of fear. Re a, repentance a, in the Bible. The judgment, we should fear, we should fear judgment and we should have a response. destroyed by God because they didn't fear him. Yeah, but God, but God is the one that brought the fear and the destruction, wasn't he? Right, so and and at the, he, uses pro he uses his messengers as prophets to also bring that, yeah, warning them. And I, I know it would surprise you, but I, I, I do understand prophetic gifts a lot as well. Um, on, even on a personal level, that's a, a topic close to me. Um, you know, so, if, so if, someone, if someone came here and was going to kill us all, shoot us all to death, 
you, would you have a problem with someone pointing a gun on them and, and scaring them away, away using fear? Uh, <laughs> take, l let me put it this way. I think it's human yes beings. Or no. I think it's human beings. Um, it feels really good to be like God. It, oh no, we're not trying to be like tempting, God. We're just, we're just showing. I can tell you this: if someone pointed a gun at me, mm -hmm. I let them shoot me and kill me. I okay. might defend myself with what I have. I don't carry a gun. Mm -hmm. I don't believe God is incapable of saving me if someone does attack me with a gun. Especially if one of us is open carrying. Yeah, or, well, or and carrying. we have people that will be open carrying here as well today. That's good. There, that could prevent a mass shooting. Yeah, there are, there are people that will be open carrying. And as I said earlier, um, as a church, we agree with largely with your cause, mm -hmm. but, but not with the method in which you guys... Um, are, are advertising or, bring, or bringing it to people. So. Well, part of the part of the method is to communicate to people the urgency of the of the situation because this is a daily emergency situation, and most people don't have any urgency. Most Christians don't have any urgency whatsoever. Yeah. So people think it's a shock value. Well, actually, it's sometimes you have to to use a harsh in your face message to get the people to get the people to wake up. Yeah. And I, I understand some people feel that way. Oh man, we've, we've been that this Holocaust has been going on for forty seven years. It's like what we've been doing is not working for forty seven years. We put pro, we put pro life politicians in office, they give our money to Planned Parenthood, they they pass bills that do nothing to abolish abortion. No politics aren't gonna save save the problem. Well I, I agree. I'm just saying that we, that's what we've been learning to hope and get a new Supreme Court justice that won't do anything that will uphold hold Roe v. Wade. Well, and we, we allow the abortion mills to remain open. Yeah. Here in Wisconsin, we know because we were out there, the abortion mills were open during the stay-at-home order while churches were closed. Yep. And Christians allowed that to happen. Yep. Christians were silent. Well, allowed that to happen. They did. Uh, they were, there were no order to be found on the sidewalks almost. And they, they weren't protesting the Governor Evers saying, this is evil. Uh, I we, was protesting. Well, the, I was, the vast I was, majority. I was writing to my my politicians. I was sharing okay. my opinion. I'm just saying the vast majority allowed Governor Evers to to be the tyrant and to allow baby to, to declare a baby murder to be essential, but churches to be unessential, and the churches allowed that him to do that. Well, again, I think you and I agree on most of this. I think we're just we have a different approach and philosophy. So, okay. um, appreciate your heart. Um, we can ask you guys not to hand stuff out in front of our church and again it's not the message I'm in I'm in opposition with but it is the approach and so I'm asking you guys if you would um, to take this somewhere else but again well, it's not, I, you know I can't I can't do anything about that it's your it's your free right to do so yes sir. So, so we're gonna remain right here okay well I'll be praying for you guys and I I hope that your ministry impacts someone well today